Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Thrawn is the new big bad of the Star Wars universe as The Mandalorian Season 3 pivots toward Ahsoka. All these storylines headed to their own crossover film directed by Dave Filoni. Thrawn is being played by Lars Mikkelsen, who voiced the character in Star Wars Rebels, and brother to Galen Erso actor Mads Mikkelsen. The character was last seen in Rebels on his Star Destroyer of the Chimera, disappearing in hyperspace with Ezra Bridger thanks to a group of Purgle hyperspace whales. Now you probably picked up on bits and pieces of Thrawn's backstory, but let us all now get on the same page. What is Thrawn's real history and why is he so desperately needed in Star Wars right now? Well, I'm going to break down Thrawn's complete history, his publication history and Legends literature, his returns in Rebels and live action, and what exact role he's going to be playing in these upcoming titles. Simply put, Thrawn is the smartest tactician in the Star Wars universe and we need him to expose how dumb everyone else is so that they can prove their heroism, wise up finally, and truly earn the affection we feel for them. Don't get me wrong, I love these softies, but they've just been getting off easy, and I think Filoni knows it, and he's about to hit everyone with the fist of a chiss. Thrawn was first introduced in 1991, Timothy Zahn's novel Heir to the Empire, the first of Zahn's Thrawn trilogy. This was an important time for Star Wars fandom, because it was eight years after Return of the Jedi, eight years before The Phantom Menace, creating really the perfect void for a new face to claim the throne of the fandom, and Thrawn activated the popularity of the expanded universe lore in a way really nothing else had before. In these books, Thrawn was introduced as a genius naval commander for the Empire, a kind of Sherlock Holmes figure with his Captain Peleon as his Watson. Peleon actually showed up in The Mandalorian Chapter 23, played by Xander Berkeley, and in these books we saw how Thrawn outmaneuvered the New Republic, really a thorn in the side of Admiral Ackbar during the years after Return of the Jedi, nearly killing Admiral Ackbar until he was assassinated by a bodyguard in the final of the three books, The Last Command. In Legends and in Canon, Thrawn is never defeated due to being outwitted or outstrategized only by treachery or unforeseen acts of God, like f***ing hyperspace whales. Now sometimes these sponsorships are me talking about hair care, but to even get to caring about your hair, you gotta hang on to the hair that you got. And that's what Keeps is for. Keeps offers clinically proven research-backed treatments to stop hair loss and improve hair growth. Two out of three guys will experience hair loss by the time they're 35, but with Keeps, you can get quality expert care without ever visiting a doctor's office or a pharmacy. All Keeps treatment plans are recommended by a licensed medical provider and delivered straight to your door at about half the cost of a traditional pharmacy. Each treatment plan comes with a full year of unlimited messaging so you can connect with your medical provider about anything, anytime. Keeps has a network of expert medical advisors, prescribers, and care specialists to support you in making your hair goals a reality. Whether you're looking to prevent hair loss, stimulate hair growth, or just take better care of the hair that you have, Keeps has you covered. Hair loss stops with Keeps. To get a special offer, go to keeps.com slash new rockstars or just click the link in the description. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash new rockstars. So in 2015, Disney bought Lucasfilm and they recategorized all expanded universe fiction as legends and thus non-canon. But in the years since, Dave Filoni and his story group have gradually begun to re-canonize Legends elements in titles like Rebels, The Mandalorian, The Book of Boba Fett, and Ahsoka, and Thrawn, naturally, was the first of these, brought in as the primary antagonist in Rebels Season 3 and Season 4. And from here, a broader range and a new generation of fans began to understand how truly great Thrawn is, as an Imperial Grand Admiral during the Empire, chasing down the crew of the Ghost on Lothal, as he used this planet as a base to build his new TIE Defenders. His hope was to construct a fleet of fighters with better shielding, and had he been successful, the Rebels would not have been able to destroy the Death Star in the Battle of Yavin, Tarkin would have blown up the Rebel base on Yavin 4, and that would have been it. That's part of the reason Thrawn is such a threat. He is the smartest guy in the room. Had he not been zipped away to hyperspace, the Rebels probably would not have won. So during this Rebels era, viewers got to see how he's able to decode his enemies by learning about their culture through their art, as is the case when he captured Hera Syndulla and appreciated her Twi'lek art. To defeat an enemy, you must know them. Not simply their battle tactics, but their history, philosophy. Art. He was also able to get inside Ezra Bridger's head by just learning more and more about his background on Lothal. Really, his intelligence comes from a new canonical backstory outlined in a new trilogy of Thrawn books, Thrawn Ascendancy, and they brought back the amazing original author, Timothy Zahn, to do it. This details Thrawn's backstory. Here, he was born on the planet Rentor in the Unknown Regions, birth name Ki Vuron Nuru, core name Thuron. The Chiss race do this really cool thing of abbreviating names from the inside out as opposed to taking the first part, which definitely says something about how complex of thinkers all the Chiss are. They think of everything holistically from the inside out. He later took on the name of Mithra Nurodo or Thron, and he was an officer for the Chiss Ascendancy, which was a smaller empire ruled by an oligarchy class of Chiss. During the Clone Wars, Thron actually briefly worked with Anakin Skywalker on a mission on Batuu, that's the setting of the Black Spire outpost in Disney's Galaxy's Edge. When the Clone Wars ended, Thron offered a 
services to the Empire, believing that it would benefit the Chiss. In reality, Thrawn joined the Empire with dual loyalties, actually intending to learn as much as he could about the Imperial weaknesses and their overall strategy so that he could use it to help his home race of the Chiss. But Thrawn quickly rose up the ranks and was granted the title of Grand Admiral by Palpatine himself, which was a huge deal because the Empire was known to be xenophobic and only promote humans to high-ranking positions. So like compare all the admirals and moths and generals that we know of the Empire to the folks who lead the rebels. Non-humans like Admiral Raddus, Admiral Akbar, Hera Syndulla. So for Thrawn to rise past all of that as a Chiss shows how respected he was. Thrawn ascendancy also shows how Thrawn was able to deduce that Darth Vader and Anakin Skywalker were the same person. In one moment, Thrawn says tellingly, many years ago I served briefly alongside General Anakin Skywalker. And Vader uses the Force to try to read Thrawn's mind, but finds Thrawn's thoughts closed off to him. Hmm. In another moment, Thrawn talks about that old Clone Wars mission and says that we once assaulted before correcting himself. And then another moment from Thrawn's point of view, he watched Vader pilot a TIE Defender, spinning the fighter in a tight curve, doing a complete roll. It's a familiar maneuver carried out with a familiar precision. It is he. Referring to Anakin's favorite barrel roll move that he showed while piloting a Jedi Starfighter in the Battle of Coruscant at the beginning of Revenge of the Sith. So now in these live action titles, Ahsoka Tano first brought up Thrawn's name in The Mandalorian Chapter 13, demanding of Thrawn's servant, the magistrate Morgan Elsbeth, Where is Grand Admiral Thrawn? Clearly, Ahsoka is still searching for Ezra Bridger after she and Sabine Wren teamed up at the end of Rebels, a search that looks like it's going to get renewed in the Ahsoka series. Thrawn appeared in the trailer for this Ahsoka spinoff series, shown only from behind, but a frontal image of Thrawn on space was shown exclusively to fans at celebration. And in these final episodes of The Mandalorian Season 3, Thrawn's protege, Captain Gilad Pelion, appeared in Moff Gideon's Shadow Council of Imperial Warlords, insisting that they need Thrawn's return to rally the scattered Imperial supporters across the galaxy to their cause. The way in real world history, armies would use mythologized commanders like George Washington or Robert E. Lee as recruitment tools. Moff Gideon dismissed the still missing Thrawn as a ghost, but Thrawn is clearly coming back. So why is this such a big deal now? Well, we need someone actually smart and actually competent in the room to really challenge these heroes and to challenge the villains we've met so far. Between the New Republic bungling the management of the galaxy, the Mandalorians constantly endangering themselves, and Moff Gideon's ridiculous arrogance, we need a villain of the cunning of the ISB boardroom scenes in Andor to really make us fear these characters. Specifically, we need a military strategist without a cultish subservience to Palpatine or a fear of Palpatine's ghost. Thrawn stands in no one's shadow. He's truly the ghost we should be afraid of, because when someone says, somehow Thrawn Ron returned? I don't think anybody's gonna be laughing. Hey, next Friday, April 21st, we'll begin my rewatch series of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1 and Volume 2 on the Deep Dive channel. So please subscribe to that channel and keep an eye out for those. You can support our growing network by grabbing something from our merch store, nerdriot.shop. Subscribe to New Rockstars on YouTube and on all social platforms. Follow me at EA Voss. Thanks for watching. Bye.